Hi folks, so um, this is resumes part two and also I'm going to talk about cover letters. Okay, so looking at the rest of this resume, um, I wouldn't break out additional experience into a separate section. It all seems pretty relevant and pretty interesting as well. Um, again, a little bit more concrete detail will be good. Um, entomology lab, that's fascinating, that's really cool. Um, Parasitic wasps, nice, nice detail. Any sort of, um, again, though, numbers, specifics about numbers and quantities and, mm -hmm. and things like that will really be beneficial for you. Um, okay, skills and certifications. There's a lot going on here. This, again, looks like one where she's trying to cram it onto one page. Please don't. You've done a lot of really interesting stuff. Um, the ArcGIS is really important. Um, Photoshop and Illustrator are also really great. Give them each a separate line. And um, I mean, I can use Photoshop and Illustrator at a really basic level. People are wondering what can you actually specifically do. If you can get some kind of certification from somewhere, that would be awesome. LinkedIn Learning has certificates if you go through a certain number of, um, of learning steps. So you might think about that uh, if you're doing something where those skills are important. You might also just list some really specific concrete things that you've done with those applications. And then all of these certifications um, and the dates are pretty spread out too. So I would separate them onto separate lines, um, specify when they're valid. And I think, I think that would be a great addition. Uh, in addition, these, these uh, first level instructor, I might try to break those out. And then surely you've used Word and PowerPoint and Excel and things like that. So include those, they're worthwhile. Okay, and then there's one more resume we're gonna look at. I want to start by saying I think this is a really, really attractive resume. It looks really cool, but um, one of the things that happens nowadays when you apply for a job with any sort of large organization, very frequently they will scan it and put it into a database. This is a nightmarish format for that kind of thing because you've got columns and nobody's expecting columns in a resume, so that's not going to work well, and I really encourage you to go with something simpler and more straightforward. Um, again, though it is attractive, it's not, it's not going to help you. Okay. Um, make sure you have your phone number, your, e, uh, um, your physical address. You'll also notice there's a ton of, of, oh, oh, and we got onto a second page. Okay. I was going to say, well, there's a weird block of blank text here. And I initially was thinking, oh, well, that's it. That's kind of short. So that by itself is a problem. If somebody scans to the bottom, they don't realize there's a second page. Um, that's not ideal. Make sure everything is spelled correctly. Is this supposed to be Sprint? I wasn't sure. Spring Mobile. I don't know what that means, but that's fine. Um, make sure that you've got really powerful verbs. I wouldn't usually use a, um, a paragraph until you're pretty advanced. So like executive level, they, they go for more for paragraphs. Um, you have somebody scan scanning through here, skimming it, looking for, have you done these specific things? Make sure it's really clear exactly what you've done. You can um, leave out stuff sometimes that's obvious, like customer service, and then that says serve versus service and service, so you want to make sure those match. Um, troubleshooting, creating and managing accounts for new and existing customers. These are really great things. I would lean out, leave out for sure, leave out cleaning the store. Um, as I said earlier, cleaning is not the most impressive task. You absolutely don't have to be like fully accurate to everything you did. You're trying to say, here are the things that I can do that make me valuable. And unless you, you're aiming for a job where you're cleaning, leave that out. Um, Taking care of a locked safe, what does that mean? Um, taking care of is kind of vague. Handling sensitive information, I would put in responsibly, um, you know, shredding or securing sensitive information, that kind of thing. Um, be a little bit more, uh, more concrete and, and detailed. Um, I'm gonna sort of zip through here, make sure here's, um, that's an N dash, E N dash. That's something I talk about in, in um, some of my classes. Uh, and, and here though, you've got a hyphen. So you really want them to match. The N dash specifically means through. So it's the appropriate form of punctuation. The prop, but you can use a hyphen. It doesn't matter. You just want to make sure they're all the same, all the same. Okay. Um, good stuff. I, I typically, 
understand that nobody cares what your objective is unless it's an objective that involves helping them. So you want to obtain a position in a thriving company using your talents and ability to solve problems. That's what you want. And I know you might think an objective is about what you want, but the company's objective is always, how do I find somebody who will do the right job for me? Leave your objective out. The only time, in my opinion, an objective is appropriate is if you're in a helping profession, which would be counseling, um, healthcare, that kind of thing. Um, or if you're like very, very specifically only looking for one job. So if you're looking for a job as an English teacher in a high school, that is your only job you'd be willing to accept, then uh, um, that can work. But again, that objective has to be about how you can help them as every bit of this stuff should be about how you can help them and how you can solve their problems. So um, I would I would get rid of that as well. <sighs> Some of this stuff is, that's nice, but I want to know, so um, the the multi um, multimedia is really awesome, pen and ink, pencil and computer design, that's awesome, but leave this part out, um, solving problems, leave that kind of stuff out because that's pretty big in general. Um, with this, you need to have an online portfolio of your work. Everybody should have that portfolio link at the bottom of your resume with additional skills. I'm going to encourage you to usually include a link to your uh, portfolio so they can see some examples of your work. And anytime you're doing something involving design or art or um, trying to think, like if you're building cars, have pictures of your cars. Um, down here under education, all this capital stuff is a little bit hard to read, so I don't encourage that. Um, spring 2021 should be on the same line. This stuff, again, in the paragraph format is a little bit harder to read. If you can go to using, get rid of the, the, um, the column on the left, use the whole uh, line, you have more space. Um, and then really briefly, um, good stuff about volunteer experience, that's awesome. Um, usually I would encourage people to leave out um, um, community college because VCU looks more impressive than any community college. Um, and nobody needs to know that you went to community college. It's just about the fact that you're at VCU now. Um, likewise, that GPA would probably, it is a very good GPA, um, but don't give them an opportunity to compare you to somebody else uh, unless you have like, a, again, like three, eight, three, nine, four. Um, awesome. So you've got some good detail here. Uh, if you're if you're applying for a job that involves you doing art, you're going to want to find a way to squeeze more detail in, probably to an art section on your resume, but not not um, again take out associates. Take if you went, I went to three different schools to get my bachelor's degree for a whole variety of reasons. I never include any of that information um, um, in my resume. It's never been on my resume. Uh, I list only the college I graduated from. Okay, popping over to cover letters. The cover letter is uh, a number of things. Part of it is there to um, show that you know how to write a proper business letter. So I like business letter format. You have the date, you have the address. Um, it should specify right here the company, the organization. Dear hiring manager is not optimal. Try to get a name if you can. Um, these should all be the same font size and they don't look like they are. So, so make sure that is, and this was a uh, email and phone number. I always include those at the end and not in a paragraph, but right after your name, you're hoping that they've read your cover letter. They're super excited and they're going to call you right away. Have it right there. Okay. Um, okay. Um, you want to specify what you're applying for. I usually go with something like, um, I, uh, I'm writing to express my interest in rather than I am applying for is a little bit just sort of flat, but, um, I am very interested in the outdoor recreation instructor position. I believe I'd be a great fit. Um, right here, I was told about this opportunity by who told me that I would fit this role. Well, you're kind of burying the important part. I would probably say, um, one of your current outdoor activity leaders and naturalists, Mark Batista, urged me to apply for this position, telling me I would be a great fit. Um, and then the stuff about school, I would I would leave out. Um, the I'm passionate about the outdoors and especially Virginia wildlife. There's nothing I enjoy more than than the ability. That's a great line. I would I would leave it for the last paragraph. Um, what you should do 
right here because uh, we've seen the resume. Okay, it's this resume with all this stuff, um, park service and everything. Right here, right after you um, talk about the person who recommended the job to you, talk about your relevant work experience because that's the most important thing to them. Okay. Um, there's some really good information here. There's actually much more specific information about um, what you were doing than than was shown on the resume. So I would you know beef that up. Um, and and if you can get even more concrete than this, though, like what kinds of insects and fungi. Um, at the same time, you don't really want to go longer than a page. So try to keep the keep the length down. You got some numbers. That's awesome. Um, some good details here and I am excited to advance my career again they don't care um, and I realize well if you're applying for an internship or something but really stay focused 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 on here's how I can help you um, so that line about being passionate I'd love to work for Chesterfield County um, you, you could say something about um, I you know, any, any of my previous employers would be happy to discuss my qualifications with you. Um, and then I appreciate your time and consideration is always great. The, I can be reached by email is obvious. So I would leave it out. Um, I would say, uh, I, you know, something like I'd be delighted to speak with you more about this. One thing to never do is to never tell them, call me at your earliest convenience. Um, never say I am the perfect person for this job because that's not something you know. You want to come up, you don't want to come across as overconfident or cocky or maybe obnoxious. Okay, so be careful. Um, back to this. So this matches the resume format, which is actually really good. But again, I'm going to suggest um, not using that format, though it's very attractive. I would stick with a very, very basic business letter format. Um, do it, and, and that business letter format, again, it, it's part of you proving to them that you know what you're doing. Uh, I would leave out like my name is and I am. Um, the community, all this stuff is not telling them why, why you're contacting them. So you want to start with why I'm contacting you. Um, I'm writing to express my interest in an internship this, uh, for summer 2020. Um, I am particularly interested. Okay. So very important. I'm particularly interested in working with the Valentine museum, I believe, and tell them about why, um, in detail, why the Valentine, if you've never been there, that's not optimal. It's okay, but use their website to express specific interest. So it doesn't just seem like you changed the name on the letter. Very, very important to make it sound like you're contacting them because you can do something specifically for them. Um, some of this stuff is also the extra customer, uh, excellent customer service record is good, but some of this stuff is a little bit, um, general. So be careful about that. Um, the one, the one big thing that leaps out at me is why the, why the Valentine and you need to answer that question for them. And then why you should say, um, for example, my experience at, let's see, here we go. Um, let's see you know, volunteering at a nursing home and leading fundraisers has really helped me to understand how to work effectively with, um, um, you know, blah, blah, blah types of organizations. I'm not even sure how to describe them effectively, but that's why I'd look at their website. I'd look at some of their language. Watch, watch, watch really carefully for typos. Okay. This, the, my, my big last message, cause the video only lets me go to 15 minutes is to make sure you get multiple people to go over these for you and make sure they're precise, accurate, without errors. Okay, so very important. And always thank them. That's definitely good. Sincerely is a great salutation. So um, remember in, in the cover letter again to just focus on what you can do for them. Okay, and good luck. I know they're hard. They're kind of a pain in the butt. Get your friends to help you and um, go out there and do great things. Thank you.